And some business stories following the review by the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission of the cost of electricity meters. A core electricity distribution company has reassured its customers of its readiness to begin mass metering initiative for prepaid meters across the company's network areas. Chief Executive Officer of EKEDC, Dr. Tino Adesanda, represented by the Chief a commercial officer, Ms. Ricky Amomo, gave the assurance uh, during a customer engagement forum from uh, Lagos Island. That's customers from Lagos Island, the Dumagboa, Jele, Ikui, and Victoria Island in Lagos. Mrs. Momo explained that uh, 8,000 customers who have made payments before the increase will be given priority without any additional charges. Executive Secretary of the Victoria Island and Ikoi Residents Association, Mr. Abdul Latif Musay, commended the company on effective service delivery and appealed to customers within the network to embrace the metering process to reduce estimated billings. We actually replaced about obsolete. 150 yes. uh, transformers that are overloaded. When you talk about obsolete, I don't really get in the sense that uh, let's just start from the core from Bijora and Island uh, uh, area, for instance. And what that means is that it is true that we have some of these equipment that are old. That they are old does not mean that they are not functional. And we have upgraded a lot of them to meet up with current situation. Those that have paid, they are going to install their meters. But at a point, we stop receiving payments. But we have about 8,000 customers that have paid already. They paid the new rates. So those are at the first that we're going to be this time around. Nigerians have to rise up to begin to do things. You know, do we all have to import? I mean, Nigerians are making cars now, right? So let's begin to do things. You know, and when we localize production, uh, there is uh, more control on the pricing. The supply of electricity has, in has improved generally, but we still are not enjoying 18 hours which is what we're paying for. And my own grouse is that we, you know, we're paying for 18 hours, we don't enjoy it, how do we get compensated? We're not compensated. But I'm hopeful uh, with the people that I've seen here today that they will you know, improve. Implementation of the cargo tracking note regime will greatly reduce cargo inspection time and cargo evacuation delays. The Minister of Marine and Blue Economy made the observation during a working visit to Nigerian Shippers Council headquarters in Lagos. If Unaya is a who's been covering the movement of the minister across the ports, now reports. As part of his week-long familiarization tour of agencies and departments under the Ministry of Marine and Blue Economy, the minister visited the headquarters of the Nigerian Shippers Council. As the council discusses its strategic plans, including efforts to digitize port processes, reduce operating costs, create a stronger legal framework for effective port regulation, as well as a push to implement the 1% freight stabilization fee. The minister considered that cargo tracking would reduce delays and make it easier to conduct business. The port community platform that you're talking about, the single window for all the uh, actors within the sector will allow for reasons of big business. So it's something that we need to pursue. If it did, the act allows you to have the 1%, you look at it and see if our best will prevent. The objective of everyone in this room, sir, I can assure you, is to make certain that in less, in less than no time, Nigeria becomes the maritime hub, at least of this our West African sub-region. Additionally, the minister underscored the need for faster cargo inspection and the importance of deploying a time frame for the evacuation of uncleared overtime cargoes. Particularly Tinkan and uh, Ababa, they have about 6,000 cargo that have been abandoned. You can imagine how much uh, space that is occupied and you can imagine the kind of revenue that we're losing. Again, it is important equally to ensure that we avoid so much of delay in carrying of cargo. A part of this is to encourage um, customs to use more of the scanner as opposed to physical examination that will take ages for it to be completed. 
Furthermore, he stressed that public-private partnerships are the most effective approach to port development. Ifunanya Eze, TVC News, Lagos. Minister of Aviation and Aerospace Development, Mr. Festus Kiamo, says compensation payments for affected locals during the construction of the second Abuja runway have begun. The minister made this known during a facility tour of the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport. Also assures that the second runway's construction will begin soon. Lara Folayan reports. It's the first major outing of the Aviation and Aerospace Development Minister in the Federal Capital Territory. He is on a facility tour of the Nambi Azikiwe International Airport. He moves from one part of the facility to another, taking a look at the state of things and expresses some concerns. For this new facility, I understand only four of the chillers, of the ten chillers are working. Now, what is the immediate solution? I have told them that my mentality to some of these things is that for example, most of those lifts that are obsolete, instead of fixing them and fixing them, you know, um, every two months they will bring a bill to fix them. And by the time you fix three times, you're already almost buying a new one. I told them, get rid of them. Let us buy high quality lifts. I don't want to promote any brand here. The ones I saw here are not good enough. I know about lifts. They're not good enough. So I will not be here and for them to go and buy substandard lifts again. As regards the second runway, which the FCT authorities say adequate compensation will be given to affected locals, the minister once again reassures that its construction will soon begin. As of today, the report I have is that the money we paid to FCT for them to pay to uh, the settlers there, they have started paying them and they have started moving. I asked the CECC people who are doing the project, they said they are giving, giving me a date of sometime next week for them to clear the site and move to site. So we are going to invite Mr. President to come and commission it. And um, it's a project Nigerians have been waiting for forever. The minister also pledges commitment to reforms in the sector as well as air safety. For us, we just want to maintain the pace uh, where we have kept commercial airlines safe for some time. And that has been aided by the fact that the regulatory body has been insulated from political control. And I intend to keep that going, which is the NCA. The NCA is directly responsible to ICAO, the international body. And that is why you can see that our skies have been safe for some time. Um, we, have, we, we keep working on that, making sure that we hold them to the highest standards. That is my duty, but not to interfere in their regulatory obligations. The minister said efforts would be made to ensure better service delivery at the airport here in Abuja and expectations are definitely high against the backdrop of these assurances. This facility tour is coming against the backdrop of a recent inspection of the airports in Lagos. Lara Folayan, TVC News, Abuja. And wrapping up business news, trade at the NGX floor ended the week positively. We all share index recording a gain of 0.09 percentage points. The top gainers were Oando, Computer Warehouse Group, Nimet, Ikeja, Hotels and Quartix. Closing did not favor the likes of Chelaram, Omatech, ABC Transport, Thomas Wirtz, Nigeria PLC and Restorex PLC.